how you guys are doing after hearing the news of this tragedy at another school district in Texas? Well, initially, of course, your heart just breaks. It breaks for those families and, and those kids in that, that school, that campus, that district, that community. Uh, it's just all of these type of tra tragedies are senseless, completely and utterly senseless. But um, our hearts, thoughts, and prayers just go out to Uvalde. And um, how scary is that, you know, for a school? I know that every school district kind of prepares for that. Talk about some of the protocols in place for your uh, school district. Well, what we do here at Redwater, we do have a guardian program. We do have a staff that is armed and our community supports that fully to take care of our kids. We also uh, are an Alice trained district uh, in that protocol. So we are not gonna just sit and wait. We're gonna try to get kids out of a situation uh, as quickly as we can. Uh, we're gonna counter if needed and um, lockdown will be our, our last choice. And so in that event, is everyone kind of trained um, to kind of handle a situation uh, like that, especially those who are given the permission uh, to carry? What's the process for that? Well, they do have to go through uh, a process, including a psychological evaluation, uh, things like that, and then be approved by our school board. As far as the Alice training, we do a big training or we have done a big training with the district and we go through with teachers simulations. We have uh, Alice drills throughout the school year for our kids uh, so that they know how to react in, in a situation. And what is sad is that we have to do those. And not every, uh, not every teacher has this permission. How does that work? No, not, not every teacher, just those that are qualified uh, and have gone through training with, uh, with handguns as well as psychological evaluation. So. And so basically you wouldn't be able to really identify the teachers that have it. It's kind Absolutely of not. It is confidential. And, and so is there a specific term that you would call this, this program? This is the Guardian program. The Guardian program, and this the is- The state of Texas allows, yes. Okay, okay. And uh, just talk about, you know, how that could potentially protect students in the event of something tragic uh, were to happen. Well, with, with the Guardians, as, as you've mentioned, they are armed and they do have permission to use force. And we have it posted on all of our campuses, all our entrances and exits that uh, we do have armed staff staff with permission to use force to protect our kids. And um, have any uh, parents like reached out or are just kind of talking about, you know, what's the conversation like after hearing something uh, like this to happen at another school? Well, of course our, you know, like I mentioned, our, our hearts are broken. Everyone's uh, hearts are broken. This morning we had our kindergarten graduation and walked in the building and Texas DPS had uh, a presence on campus, a uh, uniformed trooper. And that was wonderful to see. And in fact, I did uh, reach out to several troopers that I know and uh, thank them for their presence and their service and taking care of our, our kids. And is there anything else that you would uh, like to add here? Well, one of the things that has been on my mind this morning is, you know, we in school funding is always a, a big hot topic, but our safety allotment from the state is 10 grand. We can't make a school completely, you know, safe with with 10 grand. And so we we do a lot here at Redwater. We put in a lot of local funds, uh, which the community, the school board and the community are behind completely. But it would be nice for the state to allocate more funds for school safety. And an estimate of how many school uh, students are in your district? We have around 1,100. 
Um, and also, lastly, I know you spoke about the Alice um, program that you guys have. How often do you guys do training with that? They do training several times a year. And some are announced and some are not. Well, thank you so much um, for your time. Just taking this out. I know it's tough for everyone, especially, you know, with it happening in Texas, it could have happened anywhere. So yes. thank you and continue to do what you do and keep your kids safe. Pretty for Kettle Parish Public Schools. And just talk about how devastating it is to hear about a school shooting in Texas that took so many lives. I mean, anytime you hear anything like that, I mean, it certainly affects you, it affects the school system. Um, you know, we've been very fortunate that that hasn't occurred here, but, you know, we certainly sympathize and our heart goes out to the districts that it has happened with. But we also have to take that in every other school district as a learning experience. We have to look at what happened at that particular school, be able to judge could it happen at one of our schools, and if it, if it can, what can we do to change it that would mitigate that and, you know, lessen the chance of something like that happening. And is that something that you all have started to look at um, just since yesterday? Well, I mean, we've certainly reached out to our law enforcement partners to get their take on what happened to try to get more information. Right now, there's not a lot of solid information out there. So we will certainly be in touch with our law enforcement partners, Homeland Security, to get as much information about the incident as we can to see what we can learn from it and what we may be able to do different. And right now, how prepared is uh, Caddo Parish Public Schools in the event something tragic like that happens? Well, you know, you're, you're hopeful that you're as prepared as you can be, you know, but there's certainly more that any school district can do. Uh, you know, I think that one of the biggest issues that I see in school systems, not only our system, but uh, systems around the country, is situational awareness with educators. We've been fortunate in Caddo Parish that the school board and the superintendents for the past 30 years that I've been here have been very supportive uh, of school safety and school security and have basically put their money where their mouth is. Uh, we in Kettle Parish, I mean, we have a police officer on every campus now. Uh, we have security coordinators that work on the high school and middle school campuses along with that. Uh, we passed a bond probably about four, five years ago that allows for security improvements on campuses. Our campuses, average age of our campuses is 70 to 75 years old. They weren't built with security in mind. So we've been able to take bond money and create single entry point schools, which is what they say the national standard is, to be able to control access, control who's coming and going on your campus. So we're still in the process of that. We still, we probably, or about 65% done with creating single entry point schools, so that'll continue. But we'll also look at the incident that happened and see what happened, how they made entry into the school. Is there, are there things that we can do different? And if there are, then, you know, our crisis response plan is a fluid plan. It's, you know, I mean, certainly if we see something that's not working or something that's outdated, then we change it. We, we ask that our plans are reviewed every year by Homeland Security. They review our plans. They tell us if there's certain things that we need to change, and we're certainly willing to make those changes. As far as training for our faculty, we offer situational awareness for teachers, but we also go through mandatory drills on the campuses. Uh, along with fire drills, they're required to do three to four emergency preparedness drills. And I'll be completely honest, the majority of the time they're doing lockdown drills. And creating safe space in schools and knowing where your safe spaces are in schools. And so they train on a yearly basis on lockdown drills. And we ask them, we've created scenario-based training where they have scenarios that they use in faculty meetings and that type of thing to go over with the faculty and talk about what you would do in a certain situation so that we can hopefully have our teachers as prepared as they need to be. And the state of Louisiana doesn't have that guardianship uh, law like Texas where um, teachers can open carry if they're trained, correct? That's true. Okay, I just want to make sure we right. don't have that law. Right. Okay, and does the school board, or just in Louisiana in general, do we have, do you think that we have a good budget when it comes to security on campus? I, I will certainly say that in Caddo Parish, I can't talk about the state, uh, but in Caddo Parish, uh, 
basically the board has done quite a bit for um, funding the security effort on school campuses. Uh, when you know I started, there were probably three SROs on campus, and like I said, we now have a police officer on every campus. Uh, I would love to have full-time SROs that are trained to be SROs. That's all they do. That's their only function. Unfortunate, there's not enough police officers with SPD and not enough with the sheriff's office to put a SRO on every campus. So, you know, the majority of our campus have off-duty police officers, but the school board has funded that, that we pay off-duty wages for police officers to be on every campus. And is there anything else that you'd like to add? Well, I just think, you know, that schools have to be willing to train. And, you know, and that's the biggest thing. You know, schools, we put so much on schools as far as from the Department of Ed and different things that they have to train for this curriculum, this thing. You know, and sometimes I think security may get pushed to the side a little bit, but our schools have done a good job of going through their drills, making sure they use the scenario-based training in faculty meetings. So, you know, I certainly think there's always room for more training, and certainly there'll be a push for that. 